Hello everyone, this is Anna from DQ. Today we'll be building XML importer and we want to incorporate that into top braid edge. As we all know, each XML should have its XSD, so the XSD will be translated into the ontology and the XML itself will be imported as instances of that ontology. So let's create a new ontology. In this case I call it XML import schema, but it could have been anything else. What I would like to do is to have something similar to import RDF file. So once we click on it, there is a way to browse the file and once we click finish button, the magic happens. Of course, we don't need a different RDF representation, so this will be gone, but the overall skeleton of the importer would look like that. Please have in mind that this is an advanced tutorial, so everything will be done in the top rate composer and later on exposed here. For this particular example, we'll start completely from scratch. So let's create a new project. Let's give it a meaningful name and create two folders, one for XML, the other one for XSD. Here is our example, which we'll be working with. Uh, it's coming from definitive XML schema. We will copy those examples of XML and XSD into a file and then move it to Tabrit Composer. Tabrit Composer allows us to take the XSD and automatically translate it into RDF. Of course, it does not work for every single example, but in this particular case, just because it's a very simple example, it would work straightforward. So we just have to click import and import XML schemas, choose our XSD, and we will have yet another file created, which will be called schema.ttl. That would be an RDF representation of our XSD. Notice that we have a set of different classes representing items, product types, hats, umbrellas, and so on, and some properties referring to those classes. Now, since we have RDF representation of that XSD, we could try to open our XML file as semantic XML document. We'll be asked whether we have schema. Yes, we have, since we just generated that. We'll choose our schema, click OK, and let's see how the data looks like. So we have a set of instances, as we see, um, that represent our data. There are instances of items, product, shirt, and so on and so forth. We can either click on one of them at the bottom or unroll extra information from the middle pane. This is the result that we want to achieve through our importer, not directly through Tabrate Composer. We'll save that file for maybe later reference, so it will be a data TTL file and we click OK. Notice that right now we have a warning sign next to data.xml. The reason for that is both of the files actually have the same base URI. So let's change the base URI for the data.ttl file. First of all, it should start from HTTP and we don't really need file extension in the end. Yes, so as you notice, we already lost the warning sign. What I would also change, I would prefer to have, uh, instead of default namespace, a named prefix. Uh, so I'll copy the default namespace and I'll add namespace URI right here and change prefix for the data. One last thing which I want to do before we start doing a proper importer is to make a cleanup. So I'll create yet another folder called RDF in which I'll store my data.ttl and also schema.ttl files. So it's just a matter of drag and drop, as you see. Now, let's do the real work. Um, we will be creating a WP file um, with the importer itself. So we'll create yet another folder called SWP. And in that folder, uh, I will create a new SWP file. I'll give it a meaningful name since it's an importer, XML importer. So let's call it this way, and let's give it a file name. We will be doing an importer. So I need to get into my teamwork and bring teamwork importer, which will allow me to have teamwork framework related classes that will help me to build such importer. One last thing which I want to change is to change the prefix for my URI. I don't want it to call to be called import XML, but just importer. Let's save the file. 
Since I want to create import plugin, I'll just start searching for a class with plugins. Notice that right here we have um, plugin for RDF importer. This is uh, exactly the type of importer that we said that we want to create, but for XML. All right, so let's click on RDF file importer plugin. Notice that there is a UI prototype. This is the heart of that class. What it represents, it represents the screen when we have clickable link, some description and icon. And once we click on that link, there is another page which allows us to do something. Obviously, we want something similar for our XML importer. So let's create a clone of this class and just put it into our namespace, change the class name to make it meaningful because it's not RDF importer anymore, it will be XML. Let's change the label and we'll start changing the prototype. So we can change the comments, give it a meaningful name, and also change the title since it will be an XML importer. Okay, now let's save it and click on the class itself. This class represents the next screen. So after we clicked on the link, then we moved to a second screen. This screen is represented by this particular prototype, uh, which lives under import RDF file page. So there is a um, part which represents the browsing. When we click the finish, the magic happens. We want to do something similar, so that's why we'll create a clone of this class. Again, we want to use our own namespace, give the class a meaningful name, change the comment, the label, change the prototype. So first of all, we change the headers and some descriptions. This is the part we don't need. The form looks correct, so we'll be opening a certain class with that form. What else? We also don't need any information on different RDF types uh, that we'll be importing. The rest seems to be correct, so we can save our prototype. What I also want to mention is we do it this way because I want to make sure that error handling happens in the right way. Now we take this class name and go back to the previous class uh, where we started our walk. And notice that we were calling an RDF class before. We want to right now call our new importer import XML file page class. So technically speaking right now um, we should be able to see our XML importer plugin. Let's click on the import page. But hold on, we don't see our import XML file plugin. The reason for that is we need to make sure that this plugin is being added to our controller. To do so, we create a new folder. We call it a controller folder. And since in our case, we will be adding this importer into the ontology, then we need to create yet another SWP file. It will be a controller file. So we'll call it XML importer and now, once the file is being created, we need to find a controller representing an ontology editor. In our case, ontology editor controller lives in the ontology projects UI TTLX. That's why we add it to, our, to the imports of our new controller file. Now we need to find ontology projects project type. We can do that by typing it at the top of the screen. This way, as you can see, we found the controller for ontology projects and we are interested in project plugin. So notice that if we start typing right now our importer, there is no importer project plugin. Therefore, I will include SWP file into our imports of this controller. Once we go back into our project type again and scroll down into project plugins. Okay, here they are. Double click on teamwork project plugin and then we start typing importer. Notice that we are able to see our plugin. Okay, since we are here, one last thing which I want to do is to make sure that whenever we will be creating a new ontology. I want to make sure that our schema will be also a part of all imports for it. So I'll double click on Teamwork All Imports 
and uh, take the schema base URI and place it there. What it does for us is whenever we create a new ontology, we would be able to add that schema into the new ontology. Let's refresh the page and see what happens now. Notice that when controller got a new project plugin, right now we can see our XML file. So once we click on that link, this is the page which we just created. We can browse the XML and once we click finish, the magic happens. Let's go back into our SWP file. Uh, last time we have finished on the file page. Uh, the file page was navigating us into a class teamwork import RDF file service. So let's click on that. So this file service in fact uh, has a transaction that logs the information and there is another SWP class that is being called. So we want to create a clone of this class make it as if it was a part of the XML importer and then we'll continue with modifications. Again, we'll change the name to make sure that it's an XML importer in our importer namespace. We'll change the label and start modifying the transaction log message. There is also a response into file import result page. Let's see how this response looks like. So it will either say that the file import was complete or failed. We certainly want to have that response message, so we'll leave it for now. And let's right now incorporate that SWP class into our file page, XML file page. So we would replace the RDF file service class into XML file service class. So from now on, whenever we click uh, finish button, we will be calling this particular class. And this class is in fact calling yet another class, which is called import RDF file. Let's click on it. We will again create a clone of it. And again, we want to make sure it's in our namespace and it's an XML file import. And also that the label reflects our class. Let's go back to our service and we'll make sure that the service calls the appropriate class. Go back into import XML file service. There is no UI prototype. The reason for that is there is a certain Java code that runs in order to import RDF and it's actually being reflected in the file page. So let's go into a file page. Notice that in the form there is an action import file upload. This is in fact the Java code that is being called in order to do that. In our case, it will be an SWP call. That's why this action will be called SWP. Let's go into import XML file service. Notice that the response wouldn't work anymore because it's not a Java code anymore that will be running this import XML file service. So what we would do, we will just grab that part and we'll be using it directly into our prototype. So let's build a prototype right now. Wrap up everything in UI group and let's drop in this UI group our response. We know that response should happen twice, once we try a certain code and another time when we fail. So let's copy paste that create link once again and we'll change the message later on. Remember that in our screen we were selecting a file. So this file first we want to save into into a file in our system. So there is a special module for that, which is called export to text file, which has four arguments. We can specify the encoding for the file that we are just importing. If there was already a file like that in our system, we can replace its contents. We actually should specify a target file path, uh, which in our case will be importer.storybridlife.com because I want to store it in our project. And also uh, I want to call my file myxml.xml. So let's let's add that too. And the contents uh, which will be dropped into that file path, it's a file argument. Where does this file come from? If we look at the file page, so let's go back into a file page. Notice that in a form we have an input name called file. This in fact will be our argument into our SWP script. 
let's go all the way and see whether this argument is being passed. So in import XML file service, notice that we have a file name, but not file. So we can bring in this argument here. We just want to make sure that we will pass this argument all the way down into our import XML file. Again, I'll call it the same name as the name of the input in our form. And we know that it's a string. And again, if we go into import XML file service, we also need to add the argument with the file. This way, whenever we specify a file here, uh, it will be seen as a proper string being passed into the ex export to text file. All right, the next thing which we want to do, we want to bring in the contents of that file. So there is another module that helps us with that, where we can import text file, then we can specify the output and source file path. Our output in this case will be an XML and the source file path will be exactly the same as the target file path from the previous module. Why did we do that? We want to make sure that our XML has an encoding specified. Notice that target file path and source file path are the same. What we could do, we could create a variable called file path and then we can bring in this file path into one place and then reuse it further on. I also noticed that since it's a path, we really should have slash. Since it's an argument, we are passing it in curly braces right now. Okay, now our code looks much better. So we imported a text file into the variable called XML. What we want to do with it right now, we want to make sure that we convert this XML into RDF. So we'll use yet another module, but notice that um, we want to have access to that XML variable. That's why we wrap our new module into import text file. The new module is called convert XML to RDF. And again, if we do control space, we could see all the arguments that are being used. So we'll need to have a base URI for, for this XML. Right now we just specify a variable which we'll later on create. Then whenever uh, there are triples, they want to make sure that we'll replace them with the results of that conversion. Our XML will be that variable from the above. So again, it's being brought this way and we could specify the type, but in this case we won't need it. However, if we want to do a conversion, we need to set the context with the schema. So our query graph, in fact, will be our schema graph. And again, schema graph will be brought as a variable. That's why it's in, it's in curly braces. All right, so we have those two variables which are not defined anywhere. So let's add them into our group. Let's create schema graph. It, of course, needs to be defined through URI. That's why we do it this way. And also we need to create base URI variable. What is base URI in our case? First of all, we want to add our triples to a project graph uh, for which we added this importer, which means that project should have some sort of base URI, right? So, uh, if we look at our system, if we go into a settings tab, we would see that base URI is actually a URN. However, the triples once they are created should have really default namespace instead of base URI with a hash in the end. We want to bring the object from our project graph where the property uh, for that triple would be a special function which is called default namespace. This, is, this gives us the result of that default namespace which we have seen just a second ago. The problem with the default namespace, it actually has a hash. Our module, uh, on the other hand, expects the base URI. So what we would do, we would just take the string before the hash to make sure that we'll get some sort of base URI. But the way the module works, it would take the base URI, add the hash in the end, and then create a proper URI of a given resource. So one more thing which I want to add is to make sure that whenever we add the set context, we will take graph with imports for our schema graph, not, not just pure schema graph, but also all the imports that were added into that graph. One last thing which we need to do is to make sure that the triples which we just created after the conversion of XML to RDF 
are dropped into the appropriate graph. To do so, we create UI update and we will be inserting our triples into a certain graph. What sort of triples? It will be SPO after running this conversion. The question is where? Uh, originally in our example, it's a project graph. However, as we know, in Edge, we can either create triples in a project graph or in a workflow. Workflow in our system is called tag. So that's why my graph will be either project or tag. Again, we just created a variable that does not exist yet. So let's define it. So we'll do let project or tag graph. We need to have access to a project graph and a tag. So let's create a new argument called tag, which is a resource. And let's see if SWP that actually calls this class has that tag defined. Let's go in, into import XML file service. In arguments, we actually do have tags, so that's fine that those variables will be passed into our import XML file. All right, so there is another function that allows us to do this kind of checkup. It's called teamwork project or tag graph, which takes two arguments, either it's a project graph or a tag. All right, so right now uh, we were able to convert XML to RDF. We'll be updating a project or tag graph with the triples that are the result of that conversion. One last thing which we'll need to do, as we said before, we should update the messages for a success and failure of our importer. I want to pass in the information the file name as well. And I also want to say that success is true in case of a successful import or it's a failure in case of some issues. All right, we specified the file name argument. Let's again check whether in our service there is a file name predefined already. We need to make sure that there is an information about this variable. Yes, it is, it's already predefined. The result will be produced correctly. All right, so I think we have the base created right now. So we could try to run our service. Let's go into imports, import RDF file. So let's browse from our file system the data XML, which we imported at the very beginning. We'll click finish. We see that file import was complete. Let's go into ontology. And in fact, we see that there is a class called product type, which has instances that were imported. However, there are still some things which are being brought with together with our import that are coming from SXML. So in this case, what we could do, we could filter out those results. This is the matter of adding a filter in the where clause. So we want to make sure that the namespace of our subject is different from the namespaces of the classes that we won't need. Okay, so let's go back into Edge. We'll go into Manage tab. We'll clear the graph to make sure that we remove all the imported triples. And we will repeat our import again. So again, we go into import XML file, we'll browse the XML that we want to import and click finish. Let's go into the ontology. Notice that there is no more leftover classes. There are only the instances which in fact we wanted to import from our XML. This is a base of XML importer. There is a lot more we could do with that code. So for example, we could change the icon, we could um, move that create link with the success higher up and count number of triples being added into project or tag graph. So as I said, it's just a starting point. We could develop it further on. The thing which we did here, we in fact showed that it's possible to take an existing importer and build on top of that. So this is what I wanted to show with the import XML schema. It's an advanced tutorial, so there are a lot of things that could be explained in more detail, but I hope at least it allows you to start with custom importers.
If you have more questions, don't hesitate to contact us. And for more information, please visit our website. Thank you.